Hello everybody, welcome to my video on expenditure minimization. Uh, we are going to be looking at how to choose a bundle of goods. Uh, it's similar to utility maximization, and in another video I'll explain exactly how similar. Uh, but it's a different approach. Instead of trying to maximize utility subject to a budget constraint, we are still going to have a utility function, which I have chosen for this example to be Cobb Douglas. Uh, but instead of maximizing utility, our goal is to minimize expenditures, P1X1 plus P2X2, subject to a constraint where we keep utility greater than some fixed level. So we are trying to maintain some level of utility while minimizing expenses as much as possible. Alright, so let's set up a Lagrangian function. We need to have... Uh, the first bit is our objective function. And a Lagrange multiplier. Times that. And that's just our constraint set equal to zero. Uh, one thing I'm going to do, I'm going to make an assumption here. That alpha and beta are both positive and the alpha plus beta is less than or equal to zero. Now this assumption is going to ensure that we have a, an interior solution, which means that we don't have to look for corner solutions. That constraint is binding. Uh, it just simplifies things. If I didn't have these assumptions, I might have to look for Kuhn-Tucker conditions to check for corner solutions. Uh, for this video, let's not bother with that. So, first order conditions, uh, dl dx1, it's one of our choice variables, we're going to set that equal to zero. What's that going to look like? p1, uh, minus lambda alpha x1 to the alpha minus 1, x2 to the beta equals zero, which could be rewritten as that, where p1 equals all that stuff. dl dx2 equals zero implies that p2 is equal to lambda beta x1 to the alpha x2 to the beta minus one. So our next step is to combine these two first order conditions into one equation. And the way I'm going to do that is by taking the ratio of them. So P1 over P2 equals lambda alpha x1 to the alpha minus 1, x2 to the beta over lambda beta x1 to the alpha, x2 to the beta minus 1. Let's see, if I do that, the lambdas are going to cancel out. And I'm going to be left with alpha, alpha x2 over beta x1. All right. So from that equation, I can solve for x1 just for fun. x1 is equal to alpha alpha over beta times p2 over p1 times x2. Cool. Now once I have that, I've got this ratio. This ratio of x1 to x2 is what will allow us to minimize expenditures while still maintaining a fixed level of utility. But now I need to substitute it into the utility function into my fixed level in order to figure out how much of each to do. So we had this function. Let's rewrite it with, the, with x1 substituted in.
looks like that. And then x2 gets an alpha plus beta exponent. And from here, it's easy enough to solve for x2 as a function of u bar. Let's see. I'll leave the alpha and beta on there for a sec. U bar times beta over alpha, P1 over P2 to the alpha. Notice all I did to bring this term to the u side of the equation, I invert, I, I flipped the, the numerators and denominators. Uh, let's see, so then x2 is equal to, eh, let's not write a whole new line for that. Let's just go. Okay. Now this thing is called a Hicksian demand curve. P1, P2, U bar, sorry. Uh, and this tells us the level of good two that we can buy that allows us to spend the least while still getting our utility. So this is not a Marshallian demand curve, this is a Hicksian. And in my next video, I will show how these two concepts relate to each other. They're similar in a lot of ways. And, and when you're looking at certain levels, they'll be equal. Yeah. So there's your spoiler alert for the next, for the next video. Whatevs. Now we need to get our x1. Let's see. x1 was equal to, what was that ratio? Alpha over beta P2 over P1 times uh, U bar to the 1 over alpha plus beta times beta over alpha P1 over P2 to the alpha over alpha plus beta. Now all of this can simplify nicely because of this and this looking very similar. Uh, they're basically the negative one power of each other. And so I'm going to let you worry about the exact algebra of it. And I'm just going to tell you that x1 is equal to, is equal to p2 over p1 alpha over beta raised to the beta over alpha plus beta uh, times u bar to the one over alpha plus beta. I could also write that as u bar times p2 alpha over p1 beta to the beta because this is more consistent with how I wrote it the first time. All right, so bear with me on that. This is my, oops, you put a script there. Hicksian demand for good two was up there, and this is my Hicksian demand for good one. And so there we have it. Hicksian for good one, Hicksian for good two. Uh, that's pretty much all there is to the expenditure minimization problem. Uh, it was a pretty straightforward optimization process, minimizing prices times quantities, subject to utility being greater than or equal to some level. With my functional form, it was with utility being equal to that level. And we find that the higher the level of utility that needs to be maintained, the more we're gonna demand and then prices interact the way we would expect. So, that's all for this video. I'll do another one soon, showing the exact linkages between cost min uh, expenditure minimization and utility maximization. Thanks for watching, hope it was helpful. If not, too bad. Good luck, you guys.